Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is IRYENI, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey what's going on guys, it's Ryan and welcome to week number 104 of the top 5 Skyrim mods of the week. Now hopefully you guys will enjoy the mods that I've picked up for this week. Starting off at our number 5 spot, we have the Atlas Map Markers for Skyrim Reloaded. Now the mod page reads that this mod combines two map marker mods in a non-intrusive way, very customizable and lore friendly as always. You can set up what to show, enable all map markers for fast travel or just shown on maps but disabled, and you can enable specific markers like dungeons, dwemer ruins, or word wall locations. For Atlas, you can use the setup guides to further customize your experience by adding or removing extra locations. You can modify locations individually, in groups, or all in one. They are optional and you can choose what you want. Setup guides are on the fireplace mantle in the Riverwood Trader in Riverwood as I'm showing you right now, and the locations have been grouped into different category types for easier selection. Extra locations are not listed in the official guide as primary and secondary locations, they're included for your convenience. The scripts are for setup guides only and run when the guide is active and then it terminates. It does not run in the background or store any of your settings. And for the map markers for dungeons included with this mod, we have all of the maps that are for sale at Bellathor's and Whiterun, and if Bellathor happens to die, Yasada will be able to sell them whenever she takes over the store. So I really like this mod because it allows you to fast travel to specific locations instead of just traveling to Whiterun. Say you want to travel to Bree's home, or you just wanted to go straight to Bellathor's general goods, or you wanted to go straight to the Bannered Mare, you know, so on and so forth. If you want to go to direct locations, then this is definitely the mod for you. And it's very customizable as well, which I really like, and that's definitely why it comes in at our number five spot. So I'd recommend downloading the Atlas map markers for Skyrim Reloaded mod. Coming in at our number 4 spot we have Shield Imports. Now this mod contains 8 different shields that naturally fit into Skyrim and are made by the mod authors of the Malfalzar, the Caretaker, and Abacus. I'm pretty sure I pronounced those correctly. And all of these shields can be crafted, upgraded, and have fair stat values. Most of the shields are also integrated into the shield leveled lists so that they can be found in shops and on NPCs. That's one of my favorite things about armor and shield mods is whenever they're added to these leveled lists, which means that you can find them out in the world itself and not actually just be the only unique holder of the shield or the armor pieces, you'll be able to actually find them on bandits, in vendors and shops, and other warriors and other people in combat. So this mod includes one leather shield, three iron and wood shields, one silver shield, and three steel shields. So being able to protect yourself while also looking extremely badass, especially the tower shield, I really love the tower shield. It's one of my favorites that they've added into the game with this mod, and it just feels like these shields were meant to be in the game from the get-go, and it makes it seem like they're vanilla as well, and that's definitely what I like in a mod and that's definitely the perfect thing to have along any playthrough, and I know I'm definitely going to be using this mod in my upcoming playthroughs, so I'd recommend giving this mod a try. Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have the Balanced New Spells mod. Now this isn't necessarily an overhaul of spells in the game, more just adding on to the existing ones. Now the mod page reads that this mod is focused on adding balanced spells into the world of Skyrim. Specifically, these new spells focus on filling a niche that the current spells do not address, while keeping everything balanced. So far, there have been 24 new spells added, and all of them can be purchased from their respective College of Winterhold vendors, which I'm showing you right now. Now, once you reach the necessary skill level, these will be able to be purchased, and two of these spells can actually be found in the Archmage's quarters on a table, and each spell has a lore-friendly backstory behind them, as explained in a letter on top of the spell books. Now, the spells that have actually been added with this mod is under the Destruction skill tree, we have Improved Flames, Frostbites, and Spark spells. Then there's an Expert level, Deadly Fireball, Ice Storm, and Chain lightning spell that take a longer time than normal to charge up which is one extra second but they do extra damage and the animation changes when it's ready to cast and it adds way more of a diverse damage option then there's a master level intense flame lightning and frost cloak that lasts for two minutes rather than one and they give a 15 point boost to their respective resistance which is a 30 point boost if you dual cast 
under the conjuration skill tree, we have a conjure boom atronach, which I'm going to be showing you here in a little bit, that creates an unstable flame atronach that explodes on impact. There's also a Conjure Demora Warlock, which is a spell that summons a master level Demora Warlock for one minute. Then there's a Conjure Lesser Dragon Priest, which summons a master level Lesser Dragon Priest, and it's a permanent summon, like a Storm Thrall, etc. And the capabilities of this spell are similar to the Demora Warlock, but it has more health. There's also a Conjure Spirit Mage spell, which summons an Adept level Spirit Mage for one minute, an Adept level Summon Decoy spell, which creates a decoy with a lot of health, but does minimal damage. It creates more options for Conjuration, so you can now summon a tank against powerful enemies while you attack them, kind of like a diversion. Then there's an Adept level Summon Bound Mystic Sword and Battle Axe spell, which creates a more powerful version of the Summon Bound Sword and Battle Axe spell, and it's equivalent to Adept level damage. Under the Alteration skill tree, we have a Master Level Advanced Telekinesis spell, along with an Enhanced Lockpick spell, and a Feather and Burden spell under the Adept Level skill trees. As for the Illusion skill tree, there's an Expert Level Beautify spell, which makes your character more attractive to those around him or her, increasing barter, persuasion, and pickpocket abilities for about 60 seconds. There's also an Apprentice Level Clairvoyance Burst spell, and many, many more added with this mod. I really liked going around and playing with some of these spells, and it fits seamlessly into the game, and if you're a mage, then this is is definitely the mod to go ahead and try out. So that's definitely why it comes in at our number three spot, so I'd recommend downloading the Balanced New Spells mod. Coming in at our number two spot, we have the Diamond Smithing Complete mod. Now this mod is huge. Have you ever completed the Stones of Baron Zaya quest but don't know what to do with all those gemstones? Put them to use by crafting a stylish set of armor and weapons. There's an entirely new class of weapons and armor that lets you use all of the gemstones you find throughout Skyrim and craft them into the Arsenal of Destruction. My personal favorites are the Enchanted Arrows and the Bolts that explode with an array of magical effects. This is a complete collection of the Diamond Smithing series. Every weapon, every armor, every arrow, and every bolt all in one mod for the first time. This is a full armor mod for all races and genders, and there is a light and heavy set as well as mid-weight variants for the light curus. Every weapon type has a vanilla set plus a few extras, and crossbows and bolts are now included. These are craftable at the forge, and each gem type is unlocked as you progress at smithing. There's the garnet, which is under the iron category. Amethyst is under the steel category. Ruby is Elven and Dwarven, then Sapphire is Advanced Armor such as Steel and Orcish, Emerald comes in Glass and Ebony, and Diamond is the Dragon Armor. Now I really love the customizability of how many different types of armor that you can have. The armor looks relatively the same on each one, except for the Garment, Amethyst, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, and Diamond that are on the shoulders are different colors. The armor itself is relatively the same for each set, but the colors on the shoulders and the different types of jewels that you have on your armor make it so that you'll look extremely bad badass and look like you're a complete treasure hunter along with all the gemstones that are going to be surrounded in your armor and I really like how it looks and it gives you so many different options and so many different ways of displaying how you want your character to look and that's what I really like in a mod so that's definitely why the diamond smithing complete comes in at our number two spot so I'd recommend giving it a try. Coming in at our number one spot, we have the Ironclad Company. Now, I've never seen a mod like this before. The Ironclad Company is a mod that adds a new regiment of mercenary soldiers into Skyrim. At the Ironclad Mercenary Camp, players will be able to contract bodyguards for short-term assistance in their questing, or hire the entire company in order to unlock new followers, merchants, and abilities. Woven through all of this is a tale of betrayal and redemption for the mercenary company itself. This mod features one new exterior location, which is the Ironclad Mercenary Camp, and one new interior location location, the Ironclad Command Tent. The camp can be found south of Half Moon Hill, and the Command Tent is located at the center of the camp. You will need to sign a mercenary contract at the contract book in camp in order to gain access to the Command Tent. These six new followers are all located inside the mercenary camp or inside the Command Tent. These followers are veterans of many battles and hardships, and each of them are worthy companions for the Dragonborn. There's two new merchants, which is Andre Firekeeper and Matthias Chamond, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it, who is a low-level speech trainer. There's also a new class of weapon, which is Giant Breakers. These enormous blades combine the effect of greatswords and warhammer, in addition will knock foes off their feet if the player executes a power attack while their stamina is high. They are upgradable and can be crafted after the player unlocks the giant forging technique. They are also sold by Andre Firekeeper in the Ironclad Mercenary Camp after the player signs the contract. There's also a new type of shield, which is the round shield, which is an unadorned light armor version of the existing guard shield. And then there's craftable bodyguard contracts that serve as scrolls, which allow the dragonborn to summon a mercenary bodyguard for a day. 
There's eight new techniques that have been added with this mod as well for the Dragon Board to learn from the various personalities in the Ironclad Mercenary Camp, and these are crafted at the training dummy in the camp and require the Dragonborn to have signed a mercenary contract before learning them. I showed you that in the beginning of the showcase. All of them have different skill and attribute requirements before they become available. There's also a new vigilante near the crossroads between Whiterun and Falkreath, and a dozen new lore books and notes, along with six new lore-based loading screens. This mod adds so much into the game, and having a new regiment of mercenary soldiers into the game is just something that I've never even thought of, and I just think it's a great idea, and it's definitely fun exploring and actually playing around with these new mercenaries that are in the game, and that's definitely why it comes in at our number one spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Ironclad Company mod. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I would appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods that you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions to there as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I will talk to you guys later.